So I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, the School of Workforce Development and how it's a, just a little bit different because sometimes uh, people, when they're looking at coming to Conestoga, they get a little bit confused with our name. So our name is really, um, it's really about getting right into the, to the meat of the, the topics, meat of the industry and figuring out what does this actually look like and what do we actually need? So we, we have a lot of high demand programs. Our school is very, very busy. We have a lot of uh, predominantly international students that attend our, our programs. So we have a very good support system in place and we understand uh, what the needs are. And we do our best to make sure that we uh, support our students right from the very first day, right through to graduation. And we work with a lot of the enabling areas within the college as well, uh, such as the international office to make sure that this is as seamless as possible that you have a really good experience while you're with us. So we also work with industry, as mentioned, and some of those things we work on capstone projects so that you really get a feel for what it is that you would actually be doing within the industry. Because sometimes we, we also know that some, some programs, when we, when we look at them, it may not give you a good sense of what will I actually be doing? How will this be hands-on? And we try to work with that in all of our programs to make sure that, uh, that you do get some hands-on experience. And the bottom part of the slide there, when we talk about the skills and knowledge that can be used immediately in the workforce, I thought it, this might be actually a good segue into how do we actually build a new, a new program? And Jim talked about you know, that his program is new and, and I've got a couple uh, new programs as well that I'll be uh, discussing. But I thought it might be good to, how does that actually come about? And when we talk about the School of Workforce Development, we talk about that it's really attached to industry. So what we do is we actually work with the industries within the Conestoga region to investigate what are their current needs and also what are their future needs. And then what we do is we build an expert team that can help us build the programs that are gonna enable our students upon graduation to be ready to start their career. And this supports our industry in the Waterloo area, but also far reaching across Canada. And then what we do is we, we, go into, uh, we go into our development mode and we look at what are the skills that are needed and how can we put those into actual courses. And then the courses come together to build an actual program. And you can see from, from the slide here, we've got over 2,900 full-time international students that are enrolled in the School of Workforce Development. And we've got over 175 industry leading faculty. And what we do is we get top notch individuals to come in and teach our courses, along with our full time faculty as well that, uh, that work to maintain the consistency within our programs. So Jim's kind of already covered this as well. So we've got uh, 1570 tech related businesses in the Waterloo region. Tech is growing. And as everybody knows, and kind of Jim alluded to as well, the amount of data that is that is coming in and requiring industries to look at how they how they operate their businesses a little bit differently and what do they do with that all of that data so there's a 40 percent growth in tech jobs and that's since 2014 and we've got over 20,000 individuals that are employed in tech locally and our area is a is a is really a national hub and in some cases an international hub for a lot of the growth, innovation, all the new things that are coming out. Um, companies that were doing things a certain way are changing and they're doing things in a different way. And that's due to advancement in, in, in innovation within uh, the industry of, of technology. Um, and whether that's, uh, you know, the local areas here that we also have, you know, we always talk about banking, insurance, manufacturing, pharmaceutical. But there also is a lot of other areas as well that uh, are smaller companies that are still doing their own thing as well. And we also have graduates that not only get into the larger organizations, but also into mid-sized organizations and also smaller organizations as well. Some of our programs also lend themselves well to become self-employed, act as contractors, uh, self-employed so that they can actually run their own business, but still be working with the, the local industry as well. So the first new program that I want to tell you about is predictive analytics. And the next slide that's after this one for another new program is called business analytics. And the two really go hand in hand. And the way that I like to describe predictive analytics and business analytics, uh, two new postgraduate certificate programs, really is about one is looking back and one is looking forward. 
So predictive analytics is looking forward. What kind of things can businesses expect? Um, if they do something now, how will that actually actually uh, impact their, their outcomes for their strategic goals? And you can see from this one, this is really what we're looking at. So we're, we've got a lot of data modeling. Um, we're looking at, uh, we've got some programming in there as well. There's a lot of stuff to do with math and computer science. And those are the types of things that companies not only need to take a look at, what have we done really well, but what do we need to do in the future to be even more successful and to generate um, more for our stakeholders and whether that's internal or external stakeholders. And these are higher functioning business analysts that would be in a lot of the different sectors that we're talking about. Um, and the other one that I wanted to mention as well as uh, uh, telecommunication companies, so telecoms. And there is a lot of opportunity for individuals that can have that higher ability to help companies grow and move forward through their business strategic models as well. And this is an eight month program. And what we need is for the admission side is we're looking for a diploma degree uh, in computer science or computer programming, math or statistics. Now, this is a great sister program for uh, business analytics, which I'll get into now. The business analytics, like I mentioned, is really looking backwards and, and taking a look at what has what has happened in the company and there, how can we build from that? So this one is a little bit different and this one is very uh, getting into the, again, data analytics, uh, diagnostic analysis. We do have some big data architecture in there as well. And again, these are, these are programs that are built specifically to help you become a business analyst, which is one of the higher growth uh, jobs that are, that are coming up within industry. Now, again, this one is another one-year program. So it's eight months. Uh, there is no break in between. And we are trying to, to make it so that you know, if you did business analytics, you could slide into one of our other programs quite seamlessly as well. And you've, all, you've already got a good foundation and this works uh, back and forth either way. So going from business analytics to predictive or predictive to business analytics. And the final program that I want to just mention about is cloud data management. Now cloud data management used to be called enterprise content management. We found that the name of the program was actually a little bit uh, conflicting and, and some individuals had a tough time with what is this really about? So this is actually a two-year program and we cover it uh, within 16 months. So if you started in fall 21, you'd be graduating in December 22. It is an Ontario College uh, graduate certificate, like I mentioned, and we are looking for a diploma degree in computer science, computer programming, or some sort of IT uh, background. Uh, this one really is about, uh, there's a lot of SharePoint in this. So you'd become a SharePoint administrator. That's one of the uh, top jobs that you would actually be moving into. Uh, so you can see some of the courses there are really built around not only uh, cloud, but also some of the, the management side of things as well. And how do you actually manage all of that content that is within different organizations? So you can see there from the, from the careers, uh, SharePoint administrator, systems analyst, uh, enter enterprise content administrator, solutions architect, and there's many more that uh, are offshoots from this as well. This program here is uh, it's, it's a great program. The faculty is absolutely dynamic. Uh, we have some uh, really, we've got strong individuals that have been working down in the, in the United States, in Canada, and also internationally as well. Um, so if you are looking at something that is in the SharePoint side, and I think that everybody can probably acknowledge that uh, during the pandemic, we've moved a lot of different things to remote. And this group of individuals that uh, would work in this area would help support a lot of that as well within different organizations. And I think that we'll see that organizations as a whole are going to uh, change the way that they do things, probably less bricks and mortar and moving more to remote environments. And this, would, this program would actually help you to, to support those industries that are moving in that direction.